David forgets his shoes. David felt like he was going to fall apart. Oh my, he said, looking out the window at his impending doom. My mother always told me this is what would happen if I forgot my shoes. Now, because of his forgetfulness, David could only watch helplessly as his ship edged ominously close to a time vortex. He didn't want to fall into the vortex and enter hypertime. He didn't like that dimension where time flows not only forward, but backwards and sideways too. He pointed the ship away from the vortex and put the thrusters into overdrive. As his ship approached light speed, David made a dash for the cargo hold of his Astro Orbital Cruiser. Pushing aside time portals and neutrino splitters, David looked down and smiled. He picked up the Ultra Stabilio clock. This will have to do, he thought to himself, rushing back to the bridge of his ship. Looking forward and seeing nothing but the vortex, David knew he would have to act fast. He placed the clock into the USB port and waited, eyes closed, fingers crossed. When David opened his eyes again, he saw the stars in space once again. He knew he wouldn't have to worry about changing the past or the future or seeing alternate versions of himself. He knew he was safe. He sat back in his recliner and relaxed. He asked his computer for a hot cocoa with extra marshmallows, whipped cream, sugar, and honey. As the computer's gears whirred and swirled, David fell asleep. He felt completely content. But this feeling would not last long because David had forgotten something once again. He had forgotten to unplug the Ultra Stabilio clock. And as everyone knows, this is a very serious and a very dangerous mistake to make. Ultra Stabilio clocks can be useful tools, freezing time just long enough to save a dying patient or a ship too close to a time vortex, but they have dangers too. Freezing time won't kill you or place you into any immediate mortal threat or anything like that, but freezing time for too long just might break down the fabric of reality around you. It just might bring you to the edge of reality. And when David awoke, that's exactly what he saw. The edge of reality. And believe me, unlike the world, reality does indeed have an edge. David unplugged the Ultra Stabilio clock and pulled frantically on all the levers of the ship at once. But it was too late. He couldn't do anything but watch as his ship crossed into on reality. David was on the verge of tears. I'm going to be late for dinner, he thought. And Mother is going to be very mad at me. When David entered on reality, everything changed. His ship turned to no ship. His hair turned to no hair. And his bare feet found themselves with shoes on them. David smiled, finding himself with shoes on his feet. He thought for sure he was going to be stuck in this unreality for a very long time. But now that he had shoes, he could change all that. He clicked his heels together and, since everything was opposite in this unreal place, David wished for something other than what he wanted. I wish I was as far away from my home sweet home as possible, he said. And just like that he was home. David beamed with joy, finding hair on his head and being at home once again. Looking up, David noticed a dark mark across the sky. David slapped his forehead, realizing what he had forgotten. I shouldn't have wished to go far away from my home sweet home, he muttered. Now it's my home, not sweet home. David sighed and he suddenly felt so depressed he wanted to sit and stay there forever and just hope it would all go away. But his mother wasn't going to let him moan and cry. She grabbed him by the arm and pulled him into her space van. Let me guess, she said, rolling her eyes. You forgot something, once again. David knew he didn't have to say anything, but he told her that he had forgotten something. As David's mother put the space van in second gear and Earth exploded behind her, she groaned. Your father is going to be very grumpy when he hears what you did this time. David sighed once again, but his mother sneered at him. Don't be so blue, she said. We can always fix these things by going into hypertime, changing the past and hoping that in the process, we don't mess things up even more. Great. Hyper time. This was just what David wanted to avoid. Oh well, he said, some hope restoring in his voice. At least I won't have to eat my mom's cooking tonight. Overhearing him, his mother laughed. That's what you think, she said, putting her arm behind her seat and producing a plate of steaming hot asparagus and sausage. You didn't think I'd forget, did you?